Hi there, thanks for joining us today. This is Wish from the Tau TV community. I'm an infrastructure engineer at PINCAP and also a co-contributor of Tau TV project. I'm very glad to share how we improved Tau TV observability with my colleague Zheng Chi. Recently, we add tracing events to the Tau TV with very little overhead, let's say only a few nanoseconds per event. And we would like to share you about how we did it. Hopefully this is helpful. First, let me introduce you the Takei project we are working with. Takei is a key value database. It is distributed, transactional, and open source. It has recently become a graduated CNCF project. So far, there are more than 8,000 stars and more than 200 contributors in GitHub. As a key value database, TyKV accepts key value read and write requests. For example, get and put. Sometimes there are jitters. A write request may suddenly take a long time, while most others are normal. This can be caused by different reasons, and we would like to know why. Now we have logging and matrix. Logging is not very useful in this case. It is usually hard to link logs related to a single request together. And for matrix, sometimes it is not useful as well. Matrix only review aggregated information, like average latency. And when multiple payloads are mixed together, a data from a single request is hidden. So as a result, we want to use trace to know how data happens. TechEV is written in Rust and there are multiple tracing libraries available. These libraries are compatible with open tracing or open telemetry. This seemed to be nice, but we immediately meet some challenges. And the most tough one is performance. Data happens very rarely, for example, only once a week. This means we need to trace all requests in order to not miss it. And as a key value database, each request takes very short time only a few microseconds. Thus, the tracing facility must be super efficient, negligible compared to a few microseconds. The second challenge is that there are multiple batch systems in TaiKV. For example, these systems receive multiple incoming requests and process them together. Like in this picture, multiple write requests are accumulated and then a single disk write is performed. Some tracing libraries are not designed for this case. We would like to review all details. To resolve these issues, we had to develop our own tracing library. I would like to invite Zheng Chi to share this part with you. I am going to introduce our tracing library named Minitrace. Meaning means that it's lightweight, concise, and focused on performance. It's still a POC prototype so far. We are working on letting it be stable and production ready. We decide and develop mini trace with the prime goal of high performance. Here's the results of micro, check, micro benchmarks and integration benchmarks. On generation and collection of a span with 0.02 microseconds Latency, our tracing library was 17.5 times faster than Rust tracing and 100 times faster than Tokyo tracing. We traced 100 events by different tracing libraries, then recorded the QPS of point gap requests. As you can see, while Rust tracing half origin QPS, it trace only down 6%. I've explained what optimizations we've done for such a performance. The first key to the performance is to reduce contention. Contention happens when a shared resource is accepted concurrently in multiple spreads or cross. In most Rust implementations, spans from multiple threads are simply pushed to the same span collector, which is globally shared. 
stress assess and modify the same resource cost contention. They have to pay the overhead of blocks or atomic variables for every span. Minitrace doesn't push one span each time to the global span collector. Instead, it collects spans to thread local buffers first. Afterwards, in the thread item, spans in the thread local buffer are then collected to the global collector in batch. In this way, the global collector is assessed much less often. The contention is reduced and the performance improved. The second key to the performance is to time faster. Let's see how a basic span looks like. For each span, the chasing library records when the span is starting and when span is ending. So timing performance is important. Common chasing libraries either use system time to retrieve the time or monotonic time counter by assessing the monotonic clock. In our environments, each monotonic clock assess causes 25 nanoseconds latency. If we have 10 spans in a key value get request, the total latency causes by chasing becomes 500 nanoseconds. Remember that 10 kb get requests may take about 1,000 nanoseconds to 3,000 nanoseconds. So this have a 16% latency overhead. Another trial is to use clock monotonic cost. It's, it is fast and results in 3% latency overhead. However, it's its precision is only 4 microseconds according to our benchmarks, which limits its usage. Instead of using these clocks, we use the timestamp counter register available in modern Intel and AMD CPUs. Its value can be assessed via the RDTSCP instruction. The TSC register is very efficient with high precision. It only causes eight nanoseconds each assess in our environment. However, TSC is not perfect. In some CPUs, TSC is not synchronized in different crops. A hardware synchronized TSC can be discovered by checking some CPU flags. Even with these flags, we discovered that TSC may be not synchronized due to an unstable environment or some CPU force. Many chains carefully handled these situations to ensure that TSC value is reliable and can be used to measure the time. When many chains detect that TSC is not available or not reliable, it will fall back to use clock monotonic calls. The final key to the performance is to reduce serialization. Serialization happens when spans are collected in the memory and need to send back to some chasing storage, like Yugo. Since there are very frequent key value requests in the HKV, the chasing result reporting is also very frequent. Serialization may take long time. To reduce the serialization cost, in TIKV, we collect all spans related to a request, but only selective report them to the chasing storage. The selection is based on the request latency. Only requests that take long time will be recorded. This is different to the sample collection that we will not miss any jitters. To chase batch systems, many chains supposed to merge contests related to different requests into a single context. Then, these requests share the following child spans. Finally, shared spans are collected separately to collectors 
of this request. We are glad to see some related words in the community. A subset of cha open tracing is implemented for performance. Many trace is supposed to refer to Jaeger. The amazing Jaeger UI greatly eases our verification words. Here is GitHub repository link of mini trace. You can use mini trace in your own projects now. Some organization will be contributed to open telemetry Rust. We hope one day the official Rust client can adopt all optimizations. The upcoming TyKV 5.0 will support the JSON feature provided by the mini trace. Hope you enjoyed this talk. Welcome to contact us through the following channels.